Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. All right. So what I'm hearing from you is that you're not chasing pH. You, you know, you, yep. you believe pH is important, but you're more focused on. Yeah, it is important. You're you're more focused on the uh, the alkalinity. What um, what alkalinity range are you? Um, do you seek a certain range, or does your systems just kind of settle in within a certain range? That's a very great question. That's a good question. So alkalinity actually is a buffering capacity. It's not an element. So alkalinity, uh, when you have sufficient amount of uh, alkalinity level, just means that you have a uh, sufficient amount of uh, bicarbonate, sufficient amount of baking soda available for your coral. So for alkalinity, uh, I keep my alkalinity around, uh, eight, uh, around eight, sometimes around nine. So alkalinity, as long as it is between seven to 11, by the convenience store, it really makes not much difference, seriously. I, uh, I remember I read an article about uh, the study of alkalinity versus aquaporous growth. It basically is really not much difference at all. So if you drop below seven, that actually will create stability issue because that your system, uh, uh, the, the, the bicarbonate content is so low and then the buffering capacity actually drop. So your stability of, uh, in your tank actually lower. Um, and of course that at the same time, there, there are smaller amount of bicarbonate carbonate available to the coral. So uh, from that study, I, I, I read, it basically make not much difference at all. And now, and people, uh, I get this question from people is saying that, well, high alkalinity kill your core. I don't think so. So uh, how do we look at this? Uh, and Don, just, just so people yeah. know, I'm showing the uh, clip of your systems again, just so people oh, okay. can, uh, that might have missed yep. it before or can, can see your uh, beautiful uh, animals. <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So um, there is uh, observation that's absolutely true is when your tank is not doing well, your coral are looking a little bit uh, not doing well and then your alkalinity start to rise up. But this is always a, a question about the horse and the cart. So uh, for people who keep SPS, I think majority of us uh, will have a dosing system. Either it's a cut loser, or it's calcium reactor, or it's a two-part dosing. That means that dosing system is constantly pumping in alkalinity and calcium, regardless the consumption of the coral. So for whatever reason that caused the coral to suffer, or you are not doing well, so they reduce the consumption. They grow slower, or they stop growing altogether. So the, the consumption of alkalinity and calcium drops. But then you're still pumping in, continuously pumping in the same ratio of your alkalinity and calcium. So on your test kit, you can see your alkalinity start to rise. And then your coral not looking very hot. So that is uh, the, the result. The reason is that because your coral is not very hot to begin with, so that's why they uh, consume less of alkalinity. And then your dosing equipment are still pumping in alkalinity. And then you see the alkalinity spike. So this is the sequence of event that happened. But uh, on the other hand, if you just walk in and test alkalinity, oh my God, it's 16. And my coral look really not doing well. Mm. And they'll say, oh, there must be a high alkalinity kill my coral. No, that's not the case. It's the other way around. So basically, sometimes that people uh, will ask me, oh, I, I accidentally, my dosing pump malfunction, I just, my alkalinity is 16 right now. What should I do? Well, do as much water change as possible to drop it down and sit back, relax. Really not much, uh, you won't do too much harm. Seriously. So you're saying, you're, you're, you're basically kind of debunking a, um, a, um, a something that I, I thought was um, pretty well known in the hobby, that alk swings are not necessarily... A, a, a thing that can impact coral health? Not necessarily. Right. Uh, but actually, uh, sometimes large pH swing 
that can impact coral health. Uh, but we are talking about pretty big. For example, I swing from 7.4 lower and suddenly uh, uh, pass through the, the like 8.6, something like that. That actually can irritate coral quite greatly, but not the alkalinity. Because, well, uh, the, the important thing is alkalinity is a buffering capacity. It's not a single element. It's not uh, some kind of thing by itself that can affect your coral's health. So when your alkalinity gradually uh, drop down to below seven, your coral perfectly fine. They just uh, uh, calcify less, grow slow, they're perfectly fine. I have a friend who has a uh, green slimer growing out of the water. And if he really I had that happen water, to me. Yeah, and, and the things that I uh, test his alkalinity, six. Six. And that's what it is, six. And yeah. all the coral looks perfectly healthy, no problem. It, it just doesn't grow as fast. 